Hey, it's Mazzy. Welcome back. Uh, this is a video showcasing some wonderful illustrated album covers. Uh, this was a concept in this particular one that's going around uh, the vinyl community within YouTube uh, by Rob Walker from Manchester, United Kingdom. Up there from London, home of the Smiths and so many other bands, Oasis, all those. Uh, he wanted us to show album covers illustrated. Now, this concept is right up my alley. In fact, I've shown uh, records in the past. I think I did a video on artists who did and created and drew their own album covers. So it kind of relates. Maybe at the end of this, I'll put a link to that video. But I think this is fun. So you'll see a, a handful of these videos floating around. If you're if you subscribe to my channel and others, you'll see other people uh, do this. Now, um, again, this is right in my alley because um, I've had a photo agency for, this is my 38th year. And for about a decade, we had a division representing illustrators with my uh, late uh, friend and business partner, uh, Larry Weinberg. So uh, right here, you're going to see an illustration from one of our promos. One of our illustrators did, Mark Macho did this illustration right here. And we uh, handled a lot of pretty wonderful illustrators. Larry mostly handled them and I handled the photographers. So uh, this is for you, Larry. I just pulled a handful. I know he said show five. I ain't limited myself to five. And I'm going to give credit to these artists because I think, uh, you know, it's really hard getting an illustration project through because even though someone will like an illustrator style, some clients, I think in this case, the artist will understand, but some clients, especially in the advertising and corporate world, don't understand how an illustration is going to translate to the final product commercially. So that's a story for another day. And I, if I ever talk about, uh, agenting and photography and illustration it's quite the story and but i love illustration and uh, various styles of painters and illustrators obviously some do it by hand with paint some do you know pencil and watercolors and uh, computers these days and uh, computer graphics and various artistic things that that i'm not privy to actually i am privy to it but uh, uh, this is a record store What's the record store called? <laughs> this was in Vancouver. Illustration, kind of a photo illustration. Now, sometimes illustrations are based on photographs, sometimes exactly, sometimes they use it as a reference, and you know the grill. We don't have to get into that, but let's just go through. I'll go through them quickly. Here is Menlo Avenue. This is a post uh, posthumous release, John Lennon, Matt, Menlo Avenue, cover illustration by Andy Warhol. Obviously, this was an illustration he had done. Uh, for and by uh, about John Lennon. It wasn't initially created for the album, but uh, Yoko licensed it from Warhol's estate. He might have been alive, when, I think, when this came out. But Andy Warhol's John Lennon. Uh, this is one I included in the Self Artist. Uh, this is a great album, uh, Clouds, by Joni Mitchell. This is a self-portrait. She is a wonderful painter, and she does all these illustrations, uh, all the ones, illustrations on her cover. She's done a handful of illustrations for her own cover. A great, great artist. And uh, again, ring through and, and at the end of this and click and watch that other video. Uh, Nick Volpe did this cover for Reprise Records of Frank Sinatra. Great portrait. I realized the first section of these videos are all portraits. Not everything in this uh illustration showcases are going to be portraits of the artist, but uh, ring a ding ding reprise records, uh, you know, the chairman of the board himself, Frank Sinatra. And again, that is Nick Volt Volpe who uh, illustrated painted this cover. Here's another one. This is Diane Lawrence uh, did the future by uh, Leonard Cohen. I'm sorry, recent songs by Leonard Cohen. I had my wrong illustrated cover of Leonard Cohen. Of course, great Canadian folk singer, artist, uh, one of my all-time favorites, but this is a cool portrait by Diane Lawrence. Uh, John Berg. Now, John Berg is a designer. I think he did the illustration on this. He did a lot of stuff for Columbia Records. This is the greatest hits or the best of Tom Rush. Great folk singer amongst my very favorite, a deep baritone voice. Came out of the Greenwich Village folk scene. Uh, probably his most famous song for non-folksters 
There'd be no regrets that he wrote. That was a, a pretty big hit in the UK by the Walker Brothers. Uh, and he did two versions of it. One of his earlier folk records, he did it. And he did a later version, a little more produced version on Columbia Records. Uh, but I loved it. It's almost like a wood carving. Actually, it's literally a wood carving. Uh, these days, you'd probably do this digitally, but I think actually someone uh, did a carving at the time. This came out in the mid-70s, 1974. Uh, this greatest hits, Tom Rush and John Berg. But again, I'm, I might have uh, missed that. So if anybody uh, knows better, please put the, uh, the details down. Now, one of my favorites is by John Dyer Basley. And this is uh, on Acorn Records. And this is Gillian Welch. The Harrow and the Harvest. Just, I just think this is one of the most beautiful illustrated covers ever in the history of album covers. This is just gorgeous, and their pressings, the music on this, it's sort of singer, songwriter, folk, Americana, just lovely, lovely music uh, with Dave Rawlings on guitar. Uh, just gorgeous stuff. Um, Eric Clapton, uh, this is an album illustration painting by the great great british artist peter blake he's a montage artist uh assemblage uh, that's kind of a, my french way of uh talking about assemblages but uh, he's famous for recreating or creating uh, sergeant pepper's cover but he also did um face dances by the who he did a peter weller's uh not Strawberry Road, what's the one? The Road, the St Stanley Road, uh, that cover. But he's a great painter, a great collage artist. That's the other uh, term I was thinking. But he did a good job on this cover. I love this, um, even if it's where Eric Clapton. Uh, this is a very simple, interesting cover. Peter Fowler did this. He did a number of illustrations, almost like these sci-fi animes, very much like ja uh, Japanese anime. Uh, this is the Super Furry Animals, the Welsh band. I'm not going to even try to pronounce that. As you know, anything uh, from Wales or no vowels. So that that could be pronounced Sade, as far as I know. And this, this is one of, I think, the only album, or do they have two albums? All sung in Welsh, not in English. And I love the Super Furry Animals. But this is uh, Peter Fowler who did this illustration. I think it's kind of a cool illustration. Uh, this is more of the psychedelic. Now, there's so many of the great poster artists that I thought about, including Anton Kelly, Mouse, um, all the people did, you know, from the Grateful Dead and the film were now on posters, and, and obviously some subsequent album covers. But uh, this is John Cleveland, and I just love this. This is the uh, 13th Floor Elevators. Uh, this is a later reissue, Sunday's Mono Edition. I do have a, um, I don't have an original original, but I have a regular edition in this international albums box set that came out in the early 80s too. But this, I love this kind of psychedelic, almost primitive poster thing uh, from the 1960s. Uh, this is a favorite of mine too. The Dennis Nekvatal, Nekdeval, Nekvatal, Nekvatal. <laughs> this is um, the Violent Femmes. The Blind Leading the Naked. I uh, just love this painting, this triptych of uh, three members of uh, that great uh, band, The Violent Femmes. The Blind Leading the Naked, Dennis Nekvatal. 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 All right. Ron Cobb did this glorious cover for uh, the second album that Jared Sarampley did in 1967, their third album in total. And, you know, they did Surrealistic Pillow, came out the beginning of 67. And this, after bathing at Baxter's, came out the, towards the end of 1967. I just love this Jefferson Airplane cover, uh, After Bathing at Baxter's. Probably their most um, obtuse psychedelic uh, album, which is really a cruel ass record. Uh, this album is by Catherine Canner, and of course it's Bob Dylan's Slow Train, this first of his uh, trilogy of Christian records, and I just think this is a classic, wonderful illustration. Of course, I didn't include any of the albums that Bob Dylan uh, painted himself, including uh, music from Big Pink and several of his own albums, Self Portrait, amongst others. Uh, but I just love, love this record. Little Feet, Dixie Chicken, Neon Parks. Neon Parks illustrated, painted every album except for their first album, which was a photograph by Susan Teitelman. But I just love what he did. His, his 
is character studies and they're just, they're just really beautiful paintings and they have a certain sense of humor. I always pick the live album, uh, Waiting for Columbus with that tomato cover. It's so great. But I've been listening to a Dixie Chicken a lot lately and I think uh, this might be my favorite Neon Parks, but they're all good. He also did um, Weasel Whip My... <laughs> whipped Reez Weasel... Try to say that, Mazzy. Mm, spit it out. Weasel Whip My Flesh, Frank Zappa record. Uh, but um, that would have been a good one, too. I mean, the thing is, people are going to list, you forgot this, you forgot that. I'm doing it's more than five that Rob uh, suggested we do. I'm just jumping all in on this. This one is Abdul Man. Abdul Man did this uh, for Columbia Records for Miles Davis. This is Live Eagle. What a stunning art piece this is. This painting is really amazing. Of course, could have picked Pitches Brew and all Miles Davis, and you know, starting in 1970 through the first half of that decade, did an amazing, uh, had a lot of wonderful artists uh, illustrate his covers. And so, I mean, there's so many more. Like, there's the Eels cover there. I forgot who did that. Uh, but there's so many more. Uh, two more. Uh, I am picking a John Lennon cover. John Lennon illustrated this when he was 11 years old. He painted this in school, and it was used on walls and bridges. Uh, these series of paintings, obviously, this folds out. So you can see uh, the portrait painting and the little school doodles he did here. You've seen this. If you haven't, uh, you need to get this record. It's a, it's a wonderful record. Whatever gets you through the night. And that's just John Lennon's art. And lastly... I'd be remiss if I didn't include Klaus Vormann's great cover. One of probably two of the greatest covers that, for the Beatles album. I'd say this. And Sgt. Pepper, even if you've, you're have tired of either of them, this is an amazing cover. Um, and obviously he used some photographs of Robert Freeman as a montage there. Uh, if you got the box set of uh, Revolver, you saw that Robert Freeman, the photographer, put together this circular image of montage of photographs out that, that was his submission for revolver but they went with this klaus vermin i think it's the right choice but i love this illustration and he's still alive uh, illustrating uh, beetles and things on various uh, forms and everything so uh, that's my uh, submission illustration in music on album covers and another reason i love the 12 by 12 format on a vinyl issue. So uh, thanks, Rob, for uh, spurring this on and influencing us art lovers uh, to uh, showcase the covers of these great albums. Thanks. As he loves you. See you next time. Link below to Rob's channel and click through to that other video of artists doing it to themselves.